Right, um, just thought I'd make a little short video of my um, insulation tester or Mega. It's actually made by a company called Mega as well. Um, as to why I use one of these for testing for shorts rather than just a normal multimeter. Um, this one's got there's 50 volts, 100, 250, 500, or 1,000, but you. you it's a bit over the top, you really only probably only need maybe 250 and 500 for most things, but um, it had a few other features I like, so that's I, that's why I got this model. Um, it's also got a continuity tester on the bottom there, so we'll start off on that range. It powers up, let's put the light on. We've got one lead test um, on the earth on this my little trolley which is um, doing the job of being the chassis in something so first off we'll um, put it on the earth to make sure we've got a good connection which we have and then we'll go on the uh, blue wire which would be our neutral or one of your phases or something it doesn't really matter um, as you see that's um, it's not really showing anything Go back to the earth, and that's showing um, showing a short. But if we go over to our um, insulation testing range, so we're on 250 volts. I've just got a couple of um, old fan motors on there. Um, I'll put it back on the earth again. You always want to check your earth. I usually check it before I make a test on something and afterwards and that way you know the leads, your other leads not falling off. Um, light on. Test. There we go, dead short, 0.01. So we know we've got good earth. So we'll go back on the blue wire again. And that's coming up a dead short, so we've got a fault. The trouble with this, the light doesn't stay on too long. Um, so we know we've got a dead short on there. Uh, so what I would do is I would take my two feeds out. Obviously you've got this isolated and the fuse is out or disconnect or whatever. Um, because the fault could be on that cable, so actually, once I've disconnected that, I would probably check the cable. Twenty giga ohms we've got there, so that's well over. Um, I've got like a little crocodile clip on there, but you can pull that off, and then you've got a, a test probe. So we'll start here. Um, the test brown again. Dead short. So we've got a short on there. Now where do they go? That's the blue wires. Oh, I see everything. Test everything. Head short on the next one. Head short on that one. Head short on that one, right. Well, let's disconnect some wires. Either make a drawing of where these are come or label them or if it's something you work on regularly you might be able to remember.
Right, so we've got that motor disconnected. Um, just got a little crocodile clip back on. Um, so we're on one of the three wires. Thirteen uh, giga ohms. Well, that's pretty good. Sixteen. These have been sat out and the scrap motor pile outside, so they could be a bit damp anyway. But that one's okay. So right, we've got our two wires there. We'll make sure they're not touching anything. Um, so a wire off the thermostat. Saying so 10 mega ohms, so that side's okay. So that doesn't look like it's that side of the thermostat. Um, pretty much anything with power to it can short out, so if it can go wrong, it will. Seems okay. Just put my uh, just so together and put that on there. Try that. See what that does. Dead short. So well, that's just into the motor. Let's back out on here. Um, right, so let's disconnect the thermostat from here. Um, let's come off. Let's put that wire on there. That's on the thermostat. Hundred and forty megaohms, I think that's that's pretty okay. Um, make sure they're not shorting out on anything, because you, if you're not careful, they could be touching. You'd be chasing something that isn't there. It's a pain that light down. I must read the instructions. Maybe you can get the light to stay on all the time. Oh well, that would make you think the motor's faulty, wouldn't it? So uh, that's um, that's uh, the difference between uh, a mega and a multimeter because that didn't really show up. With a multimeter. I'm doing a sort of half assed effort here of uh, showing you something I've been caught out with before. We'll take the brown wire off. There's been all leg gone on there on the tripod. There we go. Let's get all the three wires twist them together. Ten there we go, megaohms. Well that's fine, isn't it? Nothing wrong with that. Um well that's everything disconnected, isn't it? So uh what is going on here? You might be thinking. Well, I'll show you what it is.
dead short. Where we got the test lead? On the terminal block. And I've been caught out with this before with things. I've cheated a bit there because I've cut the insulation off. But that is why they're handy for tracking down faults. I mean if you were just putting fuses in and trying it to see which one blew it and disconnecting motors you know, one, it to take ages and uh, um, two, it's not really... Anyway, that's showing a short now. Put a continuity tester on there. It can't make its mind up whether it's a short or not. Just um, the low voltage, but when you've got anything up to a thousand volts going through it, there you go. I don't know if I'll see it do it, but sometimes. See that little spark there? That's, you know, you wouldn't do that with a just a test of a little 9 volt battery in it. Oh, well, I think that'll do. Um, something else I thought I'd show you with this. Um, you get two red leads with it, and this one's a thicker cable than that one. Um, that little uh, tester with a little button on it. So if you're working somewhere where you can't reach that, you can press the button and uh, the light would stay on, you would see. So uh, if you're working miles away from the meter or something, you can uh, hit the test button. Here you go. 15 giga ohms, which it would be because I wasn't touching anything. Just another little feature that's got. I don't know what half these buttons do. We should read the instructions. 